The huge table, sturdy benches and extra seats hung upon the wall until needed, had all been made specifically for her brothers. She had arranged a small sitting area more to her liking on the other end of the great hall, which made up most of her bottom floor. A low, somewhat rough addition to the back of her home held the kitchen, a tiny pantry, a bathing room, and a small bedchamber for her companion. The high loft, which served as the upper part of her home, was where she had done things to please herself alone. She had the sinking feeling her brothers were going to force her to leave her little cottage just as she had gotten herself comfortably settled. The lads need their father, Seymour said as he let his nephew Finlay clasp his finger. Fourteen uncles aren't they enough? She drawled, setting eight tankards on the table. Nay. Their father is a laird, has land and coin. They deserve a part of that. It would appear that their father is not of a like mind. It hurt to say those words, but Ilsa fought to hide her pain. You want me to go crawling to a man who has deserted me? Seymour sighed and moved to join his brothers at the table as Ilsa set out bread, cheese and oat cakes. Nay, I want you to confront him to demand what is rightfully due your sons, his sons. Ilsa also sighed as she sat down next to her twin brother, Tate. She had hoped her brothers would not use her son's rights or welfare to sway her, but suspected she had been foolish to do so. They might be rough, loud, overbearing, and far too protective, but they were not stupid. Her weak point was her son's, and only an idiot would not realize it. Mayhap another week, she began, and groaned when her brothers all shook their heads. That would be cutting it too close to the bone. We will leave on the morrow. But... Nay, I will admit that I am fair disappointed in the lad. He is of an age with ye, muttered Ilsa. Seymour ignored her and continued. For I believed all his talk of needing to clear away some threat and prepare his keep for a wife. It is why I settled for a handfast marriage. I felt a wee bit uncomfortable insisting upon witness documents, but now I am glad that I did. He cannae deny ye or the lads. We can make him honor the vows he made. He studied Ilsa closely for a moment. I thought ye cared for the man. Ye wanted him bad enough. And I thought he cared for me, she snapped. That was obviously utter foolishness. For just a moment I forgot that I am too poor, too thin, and too red. The man was just willing to play a more devious game than usual to tumble a maid.